Hey there everybody! In today's video we're going to be talking about some of the largest animals ever caught by humans. Well, most of them were caught by humans. Some of them were actually bred instead. Anyone fancy a massive garden snail? Or perhaps maybe a big fluffy pooch? The Barbary Lion Time to kick this list off with the king of all the light touches, Mufasa. Or rather his kind, lions. The Barbary Lion, part of the 10% Northern Lion subspecies, existed for as long as ancient Rome. Back then, they were used in amphitheaters, mostly being killed for sport. Unfortunately, this specific breed was hunted to extinction in the mid-20th century, though few feline individuals that have directly descended from these huge cats still survive today. In the zoo, mind you. So, what's so special about them? Well, for one, they weighed anywhere from 270 to 300 kilograms and were about 8 feet to 9 feet in length, from head to tail. Pretty huge considering a lion today usually lays less than 200 and averages at slightly below 8 feet in length. Their direct descendants that we talked about sadly do not show the same growth as they do, though it could be due to living in captivity. The Barbary also have long, flowy manes. This is because, as we said, they're on the rare variant who lived in lower temperatures in the Atlas Mountains. They needed to keep warm in winter somehow. But what about their behavior? From what experts know, Barbary lions were usually sighted in pairs or in small family groups that are comprised of a male, female, and two cubs. This meant that despite the increasing persecution against them, these lions maintained living in prides. They usually ate African elks and gazelles, though when push came to shove and no hunt was left on the mountains, it wasn't uncommon for these guys to roll on down and prey on herds of livestock from farmers. Certainly something a farm dog wouldn't fix. Giant Manta Ray Talk about having a great day at work. One fisherman caught two giant manta rays that weighed 750 kilograms and 250 kilograms respectively when he went deep sea fishing in Mangaluru. Mangaluru is actually off the Malpe port in India. In fact, when he got back to the shore, Subash Salian, the fisherman, had to have a crane be brought in to help get the catch off of his boat. More than the fact that a crane and a pickup truck were brought in on site, I'd love to know how he managed to face off on that thing on its home turf. I would've just gotten myself whipped across the face if I were him. Wanna know something more astonishing, though? According to Yatish Bakimpati, former president of the Fishermen's Association in coastal Karnataka, catches like these happen fairly regularly. Regularly? Sir, what are the manta rays consuming in your sea to grow so dang big? As amazing or as horrifying as that sounds, the NOAA Fisheries, a U.S. federal agency focused on the stewardship of national marine resources, said the giant manta ray is an endangered species. Apparently, they're slow-growing, zooplankton-eating, migratory animals that are thinly distributed around the world. The common cause of death? Commercial fishing. Ugh. Now, let's have some bits of trivia about them. Did you know that these guys are actually related to the shark? I wouldn't have known that either, at least going by their appearance, you know? They're far too flat to be a traditional shark, to say the least. That being said, they do have brains that are at least five times bigger than a whale shark's. They're also cartilaginous, meaning they don't have any true bones. Man, it really is a floppy sea pancake. Giant African Snail I don't know how you guys feel about snails, but I definitely did not think I'd eventually come to find them disturbing. Granted, someone who enjoys French cuisine might look at this and think it's a feast. Now, snails can be pretty terrifying, especially the giant variants, but why is that? Are they carnivorous? Do they shoot acid at you? Well, no, it's because they can slowly tear down your house, and I'm not kidding. Just look at this guy, it's massive! The giant African snail, despite its name, was first found in Florida in the 60s. It took 10 years and a million dollars to eradicate them, but why are they so hell-bent on salting these suckers off of the face of the earth? Aside from the house thing, of course. Well, aside from eating the plaster and stucco of your houses, they can consume at least 500 types of plants. Not only that, but they carry a parasitic nematode that can lead to meningitis for us. The worst of the lot is that they reproduce so quickly and they can lay about 1,200 eggs in one year. And then a singular big as heck snail can squirt out a thousand eggs easy. Suddenly I'm far more afraid for my garden outside. Right now these guys can be found in Hawaii and the Caribbean, and well of course Florida since that's where they were originally found. If that list doesn't sound all that bad to you though because you can count the number of places in one hand, don't get fooled. I haven't mentioned it yet, but they could enter the states and other regions as hitchhikers on imported cargo. Heck, sometimes some people actually illegally import these snails themselves to sell as pets or classroom exhibits. And like I said before, some people could also eat them as food. 
colossal squid. You gotta love the ocean. It's got surfing, it's got beach babes, it's got a very large squid who's gonna wrap you up in one big hug. Look at how it refuses to let go of that one dude's surfboard, though. Tough luck, buddy. The colossal squid, as the name implies, is the largest squid species in the world in terms of mass. They're confirmed to be able to reach up to a mass of at least, and let me repeat this, at least 495 kilograms. In terms of length, they can reach up to 30 to 33 feet. Both these two pieces of info combined make this oceanic wonder the largest known invertebrate. The amounts of calamari packs this guy could fill. Okay, yeah, I'm mostly kidding. Please don't actually try to hunt them down for a food fiesta because the colossal squid only has a few specimens in its family, and sperm whales already have their sights on them. The first sighting of the colossal squid happened in 1925. Nothing much happened then, just a recording of its description, though in 1981 and 2003, a specimen was acquired in both respective years. It was in 2007, however, that the biggest sample was caught, weighing in at 495 kilograms. The squid is now on display at the Museum of New Zealand, in case you want to see it. So I bet some of you are wondering if it's any different from the regular tinier squid. Well, the answer is yes, to a degree. It's honestly not that different, save for the fact that it's the only one in its family with hooks. Well, they're pretty big. Sounds like a potential pirate pet, or maybe a pirate's worst nightmare personified. Guess we know what Lovecraft took inspiration from when he created Cthulhu. Lolong the Crocodile Caught on September 3, 2011 at Bunalong Creek in Agusan del Sur, Philippines by a group comprised of the local government unit, residents, and crocodile hunters of another province, Lolong was said to be the longest crocodile ever captured. Take one guess at just how long it took for these guys to hunt this guy down. It took about three weeks and at least a hundred people were needed to bring him onto the land. Though, as expected, Lolong did not go down without a fight. At several points of capture, he became incredibly aggressive and broke his restraining ropes twice before anyone was able to properly secure him. It's believed that at the time he was taken, he was at least 50 years old. So why was he hunted down for so long? Well, it's because Lolong is suspected to be what killed a fisherman and a 12-year-old girl. Residents also believe that he was responsible for the disappearance of several livestock in the area, though an examination of his stomach after the capture revealed no remains for those claims. Since then, he was placed in an enclosure until his death. Oh, by the way, his name? It was in commemoration of one of the veteran crocodile hunters who died several days before his capture. Sadly though, both Lolong the Person and Lolong the Croc are now dead. For a few years now, in fact. Experts that were interviewed by a news site stated that it was because his cage was far too small. At the time of his death, people noted his missing teeth and nails that were due to the small pond in which he attempted to swim in. Because of this, Lolong was unable to bear his own weight and died, crushed without the aid water naturally brings. Giant Centipede Tell me, you afraid of creepy crawlies, wriggly wrigglies, and just general giant bugs? Well, this part ain't for you then, kiddo. What's worse is you can't kill this one as easily because it's got an armored body! Just looking at a go on this cobra gives you goosebumps that'll last for a couple of hours. The name of this animal, more likely to be found in Bloodborne, is the Peruvian Giant yellow leg Centipede. And what a mouthful that is. It is the largest centipede species in the world, with a length that exceeds 12 inches. Because of its size, it can prey on a wider variety of animals, including other arthropods, amphibians, mammals, and reptiles. Who said spiders were the only scary, multi-legged insect there is? This big guy can naturally be found in North and South America, such as Brazil, Colombia, Venezuela, and Trinidad. What other places could it live in, though? Tropical rainforests or even tropical dry forests? But if you think its appearance wasn't enough, I'm gonna give you more reasons to be scared or intrigued by this thing. It's a carnivore, so it eats any other animals that it can overpower and kill. I know I already gave you a list of some of the prey it eats, but did you ever think smaller snakes, birds, and bats were included in the mix? Seriously, though, bats? I guess I shouldn't be too surprised, though. It has several strategies to take these prey down. Like with the bat thing in particular, this centipede would climb up cave ceilings and hold or manipulate heavier bats with only a few of its legs clinging onto the rock surface. Ugh, bats are already horrifying enough to see in a dark cave. More horrifying to see it do that to a bat. Tibetan Mastiff I need to cleanse my head of gigantic, multi-legged, Batman-hating insects for a few minutes, which is why we have this next entry on this list. You'd be surprised to know that this breed was developed centuries ago to be guard dogs for livestock and property. 
Probably not, though, given their physical prowess, but these huge dogs also enjoy life as family pets and show dogs. You'd be shocked at how big of a softie they are when it comes to their family. Don't let that fool you, though. The Tibetan Massive is still plenty overprotective, so strangers gotta be careful. An introduction from their human would go a long way to decide whether it'll lounge with you or lunge at you when you hang out at their place. The Tibetan Massive is a loving, patient, gentle, and understanding fur baby. I guess that is to be expected after working so closely with humans for centuries. It's also hardworking, protective, loyal, and fearless, which are perfect traits considering the art that it was honed in. Still, for how great they sound, it might not be the perfect breed for first-time pet owners. Despite being sophisticated and wonderful, the Tibetan Mastiff is independent, meaning it will not always look at you for guidance. Sure, it'll enjoy your friendship and admiration, but it won't always obey you, especially when it thinks it's in the right. Yes, friends, it's pretty stubborn. Also, for how tolerant they can be when their kid screams, yells, and plays with other equally loud kids, the Tibetan Mastiff may take it as a sign of aggression. Mind you, not aggression towards it, but at the kid. This, in turn, could make it territorial and drive away from the playmates, affecting its baby human social life. Not the best thing to happen when you just want to have your kid make friends, right? Now it's time for the day's best pick. Or scariest pick, honestly. The choice is up to you. Because some people prefer to have this reptile's brethren as pets. The Green Anaconda Yes, the green anaconda, also known as the giant anaconda, is the heaviest and one of the longest known snakes. Can you guess just how long, though? About 29 feet. They also weigh up to 550 pounds and more. Listen, I'm not saying I'd drop dead if I saw one somehow, but I may as well just serve myself up on a silver platter. Jokes aside, it's not a known man-eater, though. They mostly live in swamps, marshes, and slow-moving streams that can be found in the Amazon Tropical Rainforest and the Orinoco Basins. While they may be awkward on land, don't get this snake in the water. They turn into stealthy and sleek predators, able to stay nearly completely submerged thanks to their nasal openings being on top of their heads. Ugh. So, they're big and terrifying. What could get worse? Not sure which variant you're more scared of, buddy, but these guys are part of the boa family. That means they're non-venomous. That's good. But that also means they can totally crush you in a tight, not-so-loving embrace. That's bad. Because of how gigantic they are, they're able to take down prey as big as wild pigs, deer, and even jaguars. After these guys would have suffocated to death, the green anaconda's mouth is going to open wide thanks to their stretchy ligaments and swallow the animal whole. Ugh, nightmare fuel. At least they'll be good for some weeks to a few months after having a meal, right? I'll say this, though, to people who actually have this kind of monstrosity as a legal pet. Much respect, be careful. Old World Fruit Bats For a name that sounds like it comes from a Warhammer game, these guys aren't as intimidating as you may think. Actually, I might even say they're sort of cute. Old World Fruit Bats are large-eyed fruit-eating or flower-feeding bats that live anywhere from Africa to Southeast Asia and Australia. They roost in the open on trees, where sometimes I've seen them go around when I travel. Though some also opt to inhabit caves, rocks, or buildings instead. Among their species, the best known of them is the flying fox, which also happens to be the largest of all bats. To give you an idea of how big they can get, they can have wingspans the length of a whole adult while having the weight of a small container of rice. Unlike what you may think, these guys don't use echolocation to figure out the space they can traverse through, but instead rely on vision just like us humans to figure out its obstacles. I think I know what some of you are thinking. Despite what I say, these things are pests and should be rid of. Hold your horses, though. Do you know these bats play an important role in seed dispersal? Yeah, I bet you feel dumb now. But it's not in the way you might think, though. It doesn't stick pollen to its fur, but because of a rather healthy gut, which I suppose is one way to put it, the seeds the bat ate can be dispersed far from the parent trees. Just let it use the natural toilet furs, and this means that it has the potential to reforest already deforested landscapes. That said, let's not get too excited, because it requires the seed to be less than 4 millimeters, or it won't be ingested otherwise. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take 5 seconds to complete. So, here's the deal. If you just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Big Jake I wonder how it was, being on the back of this majestic beast. Part of me thinks it'd probably be pretty fun, make me feel like the king of the mountains. But the other part of me wants to start rubbing my butt, imagining how sore it might be from the huge gallops that are sure to happen. Whatever the case, though, Big Jake broke the world record for being the world's then tallest living horse. 
Big Jake was born in 2001 in the state of Nebraska, weighing a whopping 110 kilograms when he was born. That's 45 kilograms heavier than the average of his Belgian breed. I can't imagine how his mama felt when she was birthing him, considering she was average size, just like her husband. Unfortunately, he didn't stick around with his parents, as later he was bought by his eventual owner, Jerry Gilbert, when it became obvious he would grow to be huge and necessitate special accommodation. For the rest of his days, he lived at the Smoky Hollow Farm near Wisconsin, eating two to three buckets of grain with a whole bale of hay daily. Oh, I can imagine that food bill is not pretty. That isn't to say he's just a glutton, though. Big horses need tons of food for lots of energy to win competitions, which he was into. He would join draft horse showing competitions before he retired at the old age in 2013, at which point he made regular appearances instead of the Wisconsin State Fair. He was so well known that visitors would go to the farm just to meet him. While it's sad to say, Big Jake just now passed last year. Remembered as a gentle giant by his family, they state they're going to keep his stall empty as a memorial to this wonderful companion that lived with them for two decades. See you all next time!